Hi guys. So we we were swimming in a pool of um, universal love and love of the body, and now the time had come for a rough and tough judgmental trip. We are ahead of a very 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 interesting week, and I dare to say challenging. Um, I waited for this a long time because I have uh, I have a fetish <laughs> for gate 18 and the sun is going to get into gate 18 and I'm in love with it so let's see what's going to happen and as you see I dedicated this um, presentation to um, Games of Thrones and uh, <laughs> and I and, and those who haven't seen this I recommend deeply that you will and if any and, and i will try not to spoil not to to blurt spoilers i i can't guarantee for that because i'm i have this open throat and i don't know what's going to come out but i hope i'm not going to spoil you for you and for those who already are familiar and and fans of this saga <laughs> uh, you will see how these gates here, and especially the 18th, how it represents <laughs> everything that happens there. <laughs> okay, so let's begin and look at those two gates. Uh, gate 18, the gate of correction, and uh, gate 17, the gate of opinions. And they are both uh, collective logic gates. Uh, they are about sharing and giving service to the collective and, and bring upheaval when needed. And of course, um, part of the, the right angle cross of service, the, the only cross which is all, all of its, I think it's the only cross, I'm not sure, but I think it's the only cross that all four gates are logical. Um, so you can imagine how, how, um, <laughs> how critical <laughs> this thing is. Okay, so let's look at these uh, two gates. Gate 18, work on what has been spoiled, the gate of corrections. The, the vigilance and determination to uphold and defend basic and fundamental human rights. Well, yes, the, the, the origin uh, idea, the original idea about... Um, Criticism, collective criticism, is about really seeing what needs to be corrected in the collective. And this is the 18th. The 18th has this eye to see exactly what needs to be corrected. Of course, in the not self world, we know that this criticism goes to a very personal place uh, in many situations and sometimes even towards the person itself, the person who carries this gate. So the criticism here is very strong and very, very judgmental. <laughs> and we see Tywin Lannister never stop to judge. He just never, like exactly like the channel that this gate belongs to, um, the channel of judgment, a design of insati insatiability. He's insatiable, never, never, never stops criticizing. Uh, his family, yes, we are, we are talking about, we are talking about uh, the quarter of duality. This is um, criticism and it comes, the origin of it comes from relationship. Let's, let's get to the bottom of it. So the gate of correction, the criticism comes from uh, the, um, the relationship that one has with the, the parent of the opposite sex like Oedipus and Electra. So when we have a good relationship with a parent uh, of the other sex, then our standards that are in our DNA, the standards that we want to see everywhere is the standards that we had in this relationship. And if the relationship is bad, then we, are, we, are, we want to challenge everything in order to correct and... Um, and, and work on the on the spoil on what has been spoiled on the spoiled uh, in standards. So um, so that's why it's rooted in relationship, in relationships. And of course, it's about challenging authority because it, the origin again is the parent. So it's challenging authority and of of course 
holds in itself uh, also the fear of authority. Every gate in the spleen has uh, a, a very um, prim primal fear. So this is a very primal fear, fear of authority. And of course, the channel of judgment, the design of insatiability. Um, and what, what's need to be understood about this gate? This gate belongs to the, um, the stream of taste. And the stream of taste, the logical stream of taste, is about correcting uh, according to one's taste. It's not absolute truth. And it's, it's interesting because if, if this gate and this channel are lived correctly, then these are people who really can see what's need to be corrected. Of course, it depends which line and, 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 and how is the, the whole configuration of the body graph. We can't just take out one one thing and, and separate it from the from the holistic design. But this is a critic criticism. This is criticism, splenic criticism that really has the ability to see in a very accurate way what's need to be corrected. Now, if this is invited, if this judgmental uh, correction is invited, this is um, a part of a projected channel. So if it's invited, then it can be a very great service to the collective. And it's not about personal things. The not self takes this channel and this gate in a very personal way. And it, it's a cause of a lot of mess. And of course, again, it's a, a gate in the quarter of duality. So it's a lot about relationship and it can really bring us to situations and, and um, misunderstandings about this criticism. And of course, when it's not, when it's unconscious, it could be just, this person could be blurting out his, um, their, their criticism and it sometimes can be awful. I, I was witnessing stuff like this and it's really, really difficult. And those who have it conscious and live correctly, they really serve. It doesn't mean that it's easy to hear what they have to say. And it's also, it doesn't mean that they don't blurt from, from now and then. <clears throat> but basically, if really this channel and gate are, are used correctly, it is a great service. Not an easy one, but a great one. And the gate of, of opinions, the 17th gate in the Ajna Center, the channel of acceptance, it's part of the channel of acceptance, a design of an organizational being. And this gate organizes the formula. You remember that it is the next gate after the fourth gate, the gate of formulization in the, in the mental logic stream. So when we have this logical answer or formula, then the 17th, organize it according to the details if it has one, <laughs> if it has some. <laughs> this is the, the gate of the right eye. It sees in the now as every everything in the logic in the in the logic part of the collective circuitry is connected this way or another to the spleen. That's why it's in the now. It sees in the now what's how to organize. As the 18th sees in the now what's need to be corrected. Um, in the Ashna, we have some mental fears and anxieties. So this is the fear of challenged opinions. Will other accept my opinions if I say them? And anxiety over deep details. Do I have enough details to, um, to, um, to have uh, a, a, a found, to, to put foundations to my opinion? So these two very um, critical and, and logic gates are going to rule our week. And I dedicate this presentation to gate 18. We will go line by line <laughs> according to what's happened in Westeros. So the first line is conservatism, conservatism. And its lesson is the adherence to traditional patterns despite and or in spite of challenging circumstances. Now, it's, it's exactly Ned Stark. I don't want to spoil, so I'm not saying anything, but it's Ned Stark. <laughs> and we are going to feel this. And because um, Venus, and Nep and, and Venus and Pluto still 
uh, form this global conditioning pattern of the channel of struggle. So we are going to feel gate 18 very strongly in with the, the, the energy of the struggle. So it's very, very um, interesting configuration and we can't avoid it. It's very strong. Um, and now we also can see that uh, Mars that just in the last time got into the gate of the behavior of the self, the gate of self-love. So now Mars is um, in the second line in detriment, the, the angry exile. And <laughs> we can see here that Arya is the, the role model of str individual struggle. And, um, <laughs> and Sandor Clegane is of course uh, the angry exile. So it's very beautiful how they are together in their hermitage and in their own struggle and this, their, in their mutual struggle. Very interesting. The next day we have uh, the 18th in the second line. It is called terminal disease. <laughs> the recognition that what has been spoiled is irreversible. And we see, again, relationship, the things we do for love. I don't want to spoil. I'm not saying the word. And what happens here, which is very interesting, look at the timing. Jupiter has left um, the 46th gate and also got into the 18th in the first line. And it, uh, Jupiter um, um, fixes uh, the 18th in the first line in the detrimental side. So we are going to have this for quite some time now, which is again conservatism, but the detriment is the potential to refuse to correct. So we have this combination between the terminal disease and the conservatism and the potential to refuse to correct. And all this with the energy of the martyr in Mars. <laughs> oh, sorry, and I forgot, I forgot the most important thing that the channel of us abstract is back by Mercury and Again, also the 17th gate will be very, very strongly because uh, we will feel it very strongly because we have the whole global conditioning pattern of the abstract with the doubt. Oh my God. And what happens um, in the same day is that uh, Saturn is going to the fifth, uh, moved to the fifth uh, gate, the gate of waiting. And here we see Daenerys that had had the patience to wait until these eggs, these dragon eggs um, opened and uh, <laughs> her baby dragons uh, were born. So we, she's a role model for me for waiting. <laughs> and she went through a huge struggle in the community to get to where she is now. So let's see the community. Um, um, in the 28th, uh, in, uh, in uh, 745 GMT, the moon is going to get into uh, the 40th gate. And then we have the channel, of, um, the channel of community with this beautiful line that Neptune has moved to, the line of love uh, that has two sides. Uh, the, the beautiful side is the love that opens every gate and the detrimental side is um, when, uh, when we are, um, oh, I forgot how you say that, yes, uh, emotional dependency that turns love into hate. And this is also very inter interesting um, um, aspect in the not-self tribal sticky life of Westeros. <laughs> So here we see the neutrinos bring us a triple split configuration. We have uh, the collective mind, we have tribal emotional ego, and we have individual struggle. And that means that our little community and Westeros too will be fooled with, we will be full with confusion, doubt, realizations, oppression, critical opinions, and struggle. Un unbelievable. And then the 28th um, in um, just a little bit afterwards, the, after the moon gets into the, the 40th gate, we get the zealot. <laughs> we get 18 in the third line in detriment, 17 in the third line in detriment, and of course Jupiter in the 18th in, in detriment. 
So the zealot is uh, the energetic obsession to clean house. Um, and the detriment says rigid judgmentation that creates as many problems as it solves. An obsession with correction that does not bring satisfaction. And the potential to refuse to correct together, this is really amazing. And we see here King Joffrey that really had, had an obsession to clean the house. So this is a day that I would stay home, I think. It's really, really challenging day. Third line in this zealot. It will be interesting just to listen to people. And Mars is still in, in the line of the martyr. Then the third line is going to be very strongly in the air in detriment, not easy. The 29th, the fourth line of, of, the, of the, the gate of correction, and you see Sam here that always wants to be a wizard. He's so poor and so helpless and incompetent. And the 14th, the, the, sorry, the 18th four is the incompetent. Difficulties as a result of inadequacies that cannot be resolved because of inadequacies. What a line. And of course we have Jupiter still in the, in the potential to refuse to correct. And look at this, this is um, Mars is in the energy of the opportunist. And our channel of struggle had, had um, had um, created now a resonance between the two gates. This, the, they are both in, in the sixth line, and we have the the gate of the game player, the twenty six, the twenty eight. Sorry, in the sixth line, blaze of glory, the deep intuitive drive to win, no matter what the cost. You remember Arya? She's she's there. She just doesn't care what the consequences will be. And it connects to Pluto in misunderstanding, opposition without basis. But this is a very strong energy of individual um, struggle, plus this incompetent and the, refuse, uh, the refusal to correct, very strong energy, very interesting energy to um, experience. And I see now when I'm talking to you that the moon will be, while this is happening, the moon will be in the line of self-oppression. Oh, my God. Oh, and Mercury too in self-oppression. Oh, my God. What a day. The 29th. Look at your calendar. If you, what are you doing this week? You're going to change this, <laughs> some stuff because, you know, we, we might have these smiles and we really have fun with it, but... Out there, people are very, very um, um, affected by it. It's not that we're not affected. It's just that we have our shield and our, our navigator, GPS, but, um, but, but other people don't have it. And, and it is really, really frightening to see how the transit affects us. Wow, what a week. The next day, the line is the therapy, the strength to recognize a problem and to accept that it, it is beyond one's power to solve it alone. It's all about solving um, problems through relationships. And um, we see here <laughs> a very interesting relationship that not really, they don't really solve problems. They create more and more of them. But I don't want to spoil so we have we have the 18th uh, in the in the fifth line and of course the potential to refuse to correct but look at mars he's now in the heretic and also in detriment the burning at the stake behavior which directly challenges behavior and it is eventually punished so you know these two are heretics and they might be punished um no spoilers and also venus that um, got into the 44th gate in the spleen coming to meet also in detriment. So this is a very, very detrimental energy with this 18.5, really, really strong. And the last line of this gate is really beautiful. I mean, we've gone through all these difficulties and incompetencies and inadequacies and then we get to the sixth line, the top of the hexagram, and here sits the Buddhahood 
the perfected form, the potential of the perfected form through correction, or the, even the detriment is beautiful, the potential to share the values of the correction with others. Now, this is really a beautiful line, and it's, it really it, it looks as if it's worth to go through everything. The interesting thing is I have this line, and I was just thinking about it while I was doing this presentation that when I was young, I... I had the, the third line phase of this line. I was this zealot. And yes, it was, it was difficult to be such a zealot. <laughs> and, and fortunately, it com completely changed. Uh, the Buddhahood is a really interesting line. It's the eternal child. It's um, uh, Ra says about this line that these people, of course, depends what other stuff are in the configuration of the chart but people who carry this line usually have this um, tendency to be in relationship with older um, uh, partners <laughs> and this is so so correct for me I mean it was many times in my life it was like that so it's funny and and it's about needing to spoil you not it's, it's the word spoil it's it's a game of words it's, Ra says that when, when the 186 um, the 6 needs to be spoiled in, in like spoiling, not um, something that is need to be worked on. Very interesting line. So this week is really going to be interesting. And here we have Jon Snow that he was told not once and not twice that he knows nothing. And he took it very personally. And he says that he had such a bad childhood. My stepmother didn't accept me. That's why I'm helpless and incompetent. I know nothing. He really feels sorry for himself. And he thinks there is no chance to, to serve the, <laughs> his community and collective um, and help against the, the worst enemies that they have. But there is one little girl, Liana, and she, she sees something in him. She doesn't see him as incompetent. And she even said that he's, he's my king from this day until the last day. And she knows that if there is somebody who can save them from the worst enemies that they ha enemy that they have, it must be Jon Snow. We, we don't know if that's true, but this is a potential. And, he, and she recognized that John can do that because <laughs> he sticks to his strategy, he navigates according to his inner authority, and he sleeps alone. And also, if we need some help to Jon Snow to, um, to fight these horrible white walkers, then Daenerys with her dragons can come too. Of course, only if she will uh, <laughs> continue to be in her strategy, and make her inner inner authority as inner authoritative decisions and will sleep alone so now when when she's um, moving and separating from her lover she might sleep alone so she might be also a candidate to help against the white walkers and if we <laughs> if we want to survive and to protect ourselves ourselves against our white walkers, our white metrics out there, we need to stick to our strategy, authority, and we sleep alone. Have fun, and I'm waiting for, for season seven, even though it's going to take a long time, but I'm waiting. Bye-bye.